let's look at kind of textbook curves. Let's look at inverted first. An inverted yield curve is going to have a complexion like that. Basically, this is going to be your maturities from three months out to 30 year, full inversion. These are yields. So, of course, as you go down into the maturity range to longer term, yields go down. They don't always have to be like that. They can have curves. They can have little kinks in them. Now, if we want to know what a normal curve is like, it's exactly the opposite. So as you go through time, one year, three year, five year, seven year, ten year, the maturities, you see the yields go up. So if you had a 30 year, that was around 3%. You could have a two year, that was a 2% normal slope. It doesn't have to be exactly like that. Sometimes it could be curved. Now, speaking of curves, Here's the plot of the yield curve we have now. Starting with three months, one year, all the way out to third year. Like I said, here's time, here's yields, and here's what our current yield curve looks like. Now, where's the inversion? Well, as you move through time, a normal curve yields should be higher. Look what's going on here. That is not the case. So short maturities are a bit backwardated. And why is, should this be important to viewers? I'll give you a couple of easy reasons. If you have an inverted curve and you're thinking of doing a mortgage, which one do you think you want to pick? Anybody? Anybody? I'll tell you which one not to pick. Don't pick an adjustable rate mortgage. If rates are starting to move, I'm sorry, if rates are starting to move down, you want to use an adjustable rate mortgage. If rates are going up, you don't want to use an adjustable rate mortgage. But maybe the most important thing is the alarm clock for the Federal Reserve. It's going off potentially. Why? Because the whole point to the inversion of the curve is that many out there suspect traders see it first. You know how we're constantly talking about what's going on with regard to the yield curve and long maturities? Well, they're coming down. As they come down, the Fed's late to the game. So there's your inversion. If the Fed's late to the game, they're going to come in and push this down. And long end already pushed down, so the alarm clock of the Fed pay attention. Mike, what'd you think? Perfect, Rick. I mean, I, you know, I, obviously the, the alarm clock aspect of it is what stock uh, traders are, are focused on. And, and I think the thing to keep in mind, though, for context, is how much of a lead and lag time there can be with these things. So, yes, we now have an inversion from three months out to 10 years, uh, various points along that curve. It is basically saying the Fed is likely done hiking in the bond market's estimation. The next move is probably a cut, perhaps before too long, within the next year or two. Um, and what does that mean in terms of the economic outlook? It doesn't necessarily mean the cycle's over. It just means it's in this later phase when we're on alert I for that. I really think you have to look back at history. Yes, the inverted yield curve is a scary prospect, but before you sell everything, I mean, go back, the yield curve inverted what, early 2006? Yes, so the last time we initially got we had the three-month yield of above the 10-year, it was January of 2006. Um, and by the way, people did get nervous about it. It wasn't as if it was ignored. I think there's more attention on it now, but people did get nervous about it. In fact, one of the things to be, to be aware of is when people start to explain it away and say, actually, it's different this time, we probably don't have to worry about it at all. That might be the time to worry because in 06 and 07, people said, well, there's a global savings glut. There's all these technical reasons why the long yields are staying low. And that was maybe a sign that we did kind of ignored the signal. 